Welcome to Jurassic Park. Not even supposed to be here today. I'm just a fucked up girl who's looking for my own peace of mind. Welcome to the party, pal. I'll be back. I'll have what she's having. I'm gonna make him an offer again. He is looking at you, kid. You're gonna need a bigger boat. All right, Mr. DeMille, I'm ready for my close-up. Hello, I'm your host, Jim McLean. Welcome back to another episode of More Than Pixels on a Screen, a spoilerific movie review podcast brought to you by Banterflix, cinematic discussion with a Northern Irish accent. Now, on this episode, we're getting back to something we started a long time ago in a galaxy far, far away. Although this director hasn't entered that franchise just yet. Who knows? It's 2024. Who knows what James Cameron might do in the future? But we are continuing our retrospective of his career. And we've got a doozy this week. So on the previous episode in this retrospective, we look back at Terminator. Not a bad movie within James Cameron's back catalogue. And it would be a boring podcast if it was just me talking about all things James Cameron. So that's why I need my Bill Paxton on this pod. I need Joe McElroy. How are you doing, Jim? Joe, I don't know if we're that excited about this podcast. No. So we're going to be talking about Piranha 2, The Spawning, also known as Piranha 2, The Flying Killers. And this is, although it's disputed, well, it's not disputed, it's his directorial debut, but there are differing reports of how much of this film James Cameron actually directed. And I'm just going to get up on my little name because there's two other people accredited on this title. There's Miller Drake, who I know was sacked as well. But we also have, apologies for my fluid Italian, Ovido Geosinitis, I'm going to say. That's what I'm going to say. Some might pay, say as on Asonitis. But I'm going to say asonitis. That's what I'm going to say. That, that's my realm of expertise. Yeah, ass. That's you are the you the expert. Exactly. And you learned this through your love for all things James Cameron. Yeah, it's that's the big takeaway from doing this series. It's just my love of bombs. Yeah, you mm-hmm. love a good bomb. That's uh, exactly. <laughs> you love a good bomb, Joe. So, and who doesn't? It's 2024. Now joining us on this retrospective. And it's not just because he's hanging around the studio, looking in like Martin Scorsese going, can I come in? No, it's the lovely Adam. What's happening? Neeson. Had to come in and see the arse part uh, in in the flesh. (laughs) You want to see my arse flesh? Here, you're the expert. He literally just came in, uh, listeners, and just went, uh, whose arse is that? (laughs) Whose arse is that? Just a lineup of arses. Look. And after showing you six different photos of six different arses, he said, actually, they're all just mine from different angles. Yeah, I was pleased either way. <laughs> yeah. I'll give you 20 quid for that and 20 quid for that. <laughs> Sorry, Ted, I've completely misread the situation. So, Adam, uh, we've had you on a Cameron retrospective before, haven't we? I don't think so. Adam, this is your first time <laughs> joining Joe and I on this retrospective. We've been through The Abyss. We've done The Terminator. We've done Titanic. We've even done a bit of Avatar, True Lies. And now we're bringing you on for this bona fide cinematic classic that is Piranha 2 from 1982, sequel to Joe Dante's, I think, slightly underloved kind of Jaws ripoff. Here we have a film that is much more blatantly a ripoff of Jaws. We have the head of a hotel who just wants to get the beaches open. We have Lance Henriksen as a, a cop patrolling those beaches. We have a scientist, a sexy scientist, and uh, all matter of nonsense. And then the small issue, flying piranha. When will they learn? When will they learn, listeners? I like that you had this whole series of Cameron movies. One of my favourite directors made a, 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 at least three masterpieces, and you went, I know, we'll get Neeson on for the Flying Fish movie. <laughs> I thought, when I looked through our list of contributors, I went... Who could we get on for this? And Joe and I consulted and Joe just kept looking at photos of arses. That's how he picked. He literally went through the photos of arses of all our contributor pool. I went, that's the arse I want. Can I just point out, I don't know how you got all those pictures, but thank you. Um, <laughs> but yeah, Adam, you're, you were the real winner for the piranha. It was like, uh, do you remember in X Factor when they would be like, they put all the photos on the table and they would pick 
yeah. all the things, but it was just 40 pictures of my arse. <laughs> <laughs> were, you, were you really excited when we hired the guy from The X Factor just to go, Adam Neeson, <laughs> come on down. Show us them cheeks. And I did. And Joe? I was very pleased. Yeah. There was. Joe was very excited. Uh, we've had you on the pods before. I mean, last Halloween we had you on pods together. But this is the first time we've had you on this camera in retrospective. Before we chat about the film, I think we'll play a clip. Sleek. Fierce. Savage. Deadly. The piranha. For centuries, nature's most ferocious killer. Until now. The new breed is here. Faster. More ferocious. And infinitely more deadly. Piranha 2. It's tremendous jaw pressure. It's sheared cleanly through bone in places. It's here. It's alive. And it's multiplying. We spliced in genes from different species to create the ultimate killer organism. It lives in the depths of the sea, but it can strike anywhere. A super breed of killer fish that can swim, fly, and attack at any time. ultimate killing machine. Now, you are not safe out of the water. Piranha 2 Flying Killers. So that's a clip of Piranha 2 The Spawning. Uh, Joe, had you seen this film before when you were looking back within Cameron's back catalogue or you, have you just watched this specifically for this pod? To be honest with you, it's specifically for this pod because... It's one of those films that was like, mm, will I watch it? Won't I watch it? I'm like, probably but have you not. seen Piranha, I guess. Before. Yeah. 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 But I actually only seen it fairly recently. Uh, I think it was late last year. Just the, uh, you know, just scrolling through uh, whatever streamer. I was like, oh, there's Piranha. <laughs> Never seen it. Yeah. Give it a go. And yeah, really liked it. Uh, it's a good solid debut from Joe Dante. And, um, as far as Jaws ripoffs go, it's one of the better ones. It's a Jaws ripoff, but it does enough to do its own thing. Yeah. I think, which I don't think you get here. You get some. So this would have just been out in the I think we'd have had Jaws 2 already would have hit cinemas. I'm not sure about Jaws 3, but the less said about that entry, the better. I think Jaws 3 might be in around a couple of maybe a year or two after this film's release. So here, I don't know. Give it its proper title, Jaws 3D. 3D. It's a indeed. very different film. Dennis Quaid. Different shark. Dennis Quaid, you know, what can I say? That man, he, he, you know, he's just, he, he can fight sharks, but he's not the best. No. No. You know, but we're <laughs> not here Ronald to talk. Reagan, we're not though. here to talk about the Jaws <laughs> franchise. Hold on. <laughs> here we go. <laughs> Dude's just brought up something. Did, have you watched the Ronald Reagan trailer yet? I brought it up in a pod last month. No. Jim. I've been busy. Joe. <laughs> Let's talk Reagan. Incredible. That's our side podcast of the podcast. Yeah. Let's talk Reagan. Hold on, I'll do a theme tune. Do 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 do. do. Well, <laughs> what do you think of the Ronald Reagan trailer? Shade, but I really want to see it. And that's this episode of Let's Talk Reagan. Do 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 do. do. Well, <laughs> we look forward to future episodes. No, you're just going to be picking. You're just going to be sticking to actors playing Ronald Reagan, or is it just Reagan's in movie? Because that could bring back to The Exorcist. Oh, fuck yeah, that is true. Oh no, oh. the Reagan Cinematic Universe. Uh, the best, hold on, sorry. <laughs> diddly, diddly, diddly. Well, welcome back to the second episode of, um, what was the name of the show I just created? <laughs> what? Let's Talk Reagan. Yeah. Um, Do you ever see uh, Bruce Campbell in Fargo Season 2? Yeah, it was good. Plays a good Reagan. Diddly, diddly, diddly. Well, there, you go, Jim. <laughs> there we go. So this is this is the madness we wanted you to bring, Adam. On this podcast. So had you seen, Joe hadn't seen Piranha 2. Mm-hmm. Had you seen, I guess, Piranha? Had you seen Piranha 2 before we asked you on this pod? I'd seen Piranha um, Double D, 
<laughs> what the sequel <laughs> Piranha 3D yeah that's what it was called oh yeah 3 double D yeah. 3 double D um, great movie I hadn't I haven't seen Piranha 1 um, I know it's a Dante Roger Corman classic but um, it just hasn't crossed my eyes yet um, anytime I think of Piranhas I always think of cartoon Piranhas you, know, you put your hands in a bowl and then yeah. they go and they come down as a skeleton yeah. So that's really what I was hoping for. I this. think we're both thinking the same thing. I think we're picturing the Simpsons Halloween special. 100%. Where the piranhas come out of the TV screen. 100%. And then Lisa reverses it and we Bart's okay. He's like, yeah. I carumba. <laughs> Don't have a cow, man. <laughs> Do the Bart, man. There's reference for the kids. Eat my shits. Well, but um, probably <laughs> 82, probably the Simpsons are probably in what, it's 25th series at this point. <laughs> uh, I don't know. So, yeah, so 1982, Piranha 2, The Spawning. Uh, contentious in the sense that James Cameron was hired. There is kind of various reports of how much he filmed. Some people say he was there for the whole duration. Other people, he was said, was only there for a couple of weeks before he was replaced. I had mentioned when we thought about recording this, going back just to show how long ago we thought of this and just getting everybody in together, was that it was Roger Corman was involved in this. But he's not involved in any way with Piranha 2. He's involved with Piranha, but not with this. So, I mean, I wanted to talk about... I thought it would be an, an opportunity to talk about both Cameron and Corman. Unfortunately, he's not involved in this project, but he did a good job with Piranha, as we said with Joe Dante. So we've all watched this. You've both seen this for the first time. I had seen this years ago. Years ago, late night. I'm going to say Channel 4, possibly Channel 5. And thinking it was amazing. Thinking it was amazing, but I was probably about 10. Because I'd seen Piranha. And there's certain sequences in the first film that I think are, are nasty and gory. I know by today's standards, they probably are are pretty tame. I'm thinking in particular, it's Kevin McCarthy's death sequence in Prana. We see his legs and it's like, oh, that's horrible, icky and, and nasty. Yeah, it's pretty tame by today's standards. And I just thought it was like, what could be better? You have Piranha. Well, they're in the sea. How are you going to make that better and scarier? They can fly. You've done it again, Howard. The 10-year-old you also think the same as 31-year-old me and went, a lot of boobs in this. A lot of boobs are in this film. <laughs> and you know what? 42-year-old me was like, oh, a lot of boobs in this. <laughs> and at the very start, we have people making love underwater. Well, let's just get it right. They're making love in the middle of the ocean, <laughs> yeah. not just on the side of the beach. On, on a sunken ship. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I've never, I mean, I've been married for quite 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 some time with my lovely wife maybe i'm just a very boring partner but i've never thought to myself i'm going to charter a boat mm. i'm going to go out and you know the lusitini is just off the irish coast let's just go down get our scuba gear on wife and let's ride like limpets you'd be getting more yeah. than tetanus shots tell you <laughs> <laughs> so yeah it's a it's a weird opening and this is a guess where it i know it's cameron's first accredited directorial role but there's nothing in it that did any of you know something that's like, that's like oh well that's quintessential james cameron other than the presence of lance henriksen no not really i was like that's the whole thing i was doing throughout i was like well right which of the you know what part of this film did cameron do which parts didn't he do and then i was like none of it really adds up and none of it really seems like it's you know distinctly cameron or anything in line with what he does, I thought, I remember reading something to do with the flying prana sort of helped him whenever he did face huggers and aliens, but yeah. that's about it. But there I'll, is a sequence I have to say is is a blatant like alien ripoff. Yeah, yeah. In Piranha Two, but no, nothing stands out. If anything, you know, when you're talking about opening, it's very Italian. Put yeah. it that way. <laughs> um, yeah, and uh, it doesn't let up from there in terms of its Italianness. So no, say. it it does you know, scream of kind of knock off that kind of giallo kind of like that, that that glorious decade or decade, that glorious era of, of Italian cinema where it's like, what's there's been a big Hollywood movie? Let's do it on the cheap in Italy. Whoop whoop whoop. And uh yeah, zombie flesh eaters. 
2. Am I, is that the, the correct title? Zombie Flesh Eaters 2? Yeah, it's zombie. Zombie Flesh oh, Eaters. Like 20. You can yeah, pick yeah. anyone you like. Right. There's, there's quite a few. There's, I know there's umpteen alien ripoffs mm-hmm. that are definitely there. So, yeah, I have to admit, rewatching it for this pod, I did not enjoy the experience, even with all the boobs, Adam. Mm. And all the kind of cinematic cliches you can possibly think of, all the Jaws ripoffs that are there, it, and, and I guess even Alien, because Alien would have been out at this stage. So there is one sequence where they visit a morgue, and it's, I think it's the first time we see the piranha, isn't it? Well, well, first time we actually see them, because they you hear them and they have that noise, and the first, the, the Joe Dante original kind of give us that trope of whenever the piranha are, are spawning, you see the kind of bubbles in the water and you hear that noise. Yeah. But this is the first time we see one out of water. Just people are, it's a little nurse. who doesn't even want to let these two people in who just want to check the body, <clears throat> jaws, and just want to check it for its bite marks just to see what exactly, who, who, who killed this woman's friend. And little nurse shoes them out and goes you go go away and she turns around to the body and lo and behold a piranha jumps out of it jesus christ near shit myself and i I was like yeah okay you stole that from alien i was gonna say it's perfect timing as well like it didn't decide to jump out when the first two people are examined it's like wait this nurse is on her own i'm gonna hop out now give her a wee nibble i was thinking about you that sequence in family guy just the little piranhas in there i'm gonna come out (laughs) i'm I'm going to eat you. That that guy. Yeah. That's it. I was picturing in my head. I'm, go- I'm going to get you. I think. Nom, nom, nom. <laughs> going to get you little leggies. <laughs> I, th- I think there is something. Munch, munch, munch. <laughs> I think there is something quite Cameron-esque in this that maybe was unintentional or like he didn't know he was doing it. But I think the relationship between Lance Hendrickson and his wife is quite Cameron in his own life. Mm. Where like... Lance Henderson doesn't really talk to his wife. It's just letting her have this affair yeah. with this other man. Doesn't really talk to his kid. And then whenever the other man, like the person that's having the affair, dies, mm. you know, he embraces the wife and the child. And I think that's quite... It hadn't happened to Cameron yet. Yeah. But with Cameron's divorces and like his love his love life and um and stuff, it is quite, to look back on, reflective of the man himself. Obviously... Like Joe said, there's no fucking like you don't watch this and go. Clearly, this guy did Avatar. Yeah. <laughs> like, there's no connection, but it is interesting and on a personal. I'd skill. love to be James Carr. I wonder because I think it's an it's an IMDb, so clearly it must be a bona fide certified quote. I think there's that line where Cameron says, "This film improves halfway mark, particularly if you've got a six pack of beer. <laughs> the drunker you get, the better it is." Do you ever think he just sits and has to be hundred percent gets horribly drunk? And he's like in the middle of shooting Avatar 5 or whatever it is. And I think it's the third one. But I think he's doing three and four back to back. Or he's, yeah. he's, he's shot, I think, is it two and three he's done back to back as his visual effects works now? And then it's four and five he wants to do? I'm not sure. Yeah. If you're listening, James, let us in. Let us know. Hi, right, Jim. Be great if you let us know. But um, he's definitely done three. And it's in post production. Yeah. And I think four and five are shooting at the minute. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. Do you, think it's he, do you ever think he just has a couple of pints and is like, right. All these amazing visual effects I'm getting to work at now. Let's go back and watch Piranha 2. <laughs> just where we've got like a little toy fish. And it's just enough of the person, the puppeteers off. I don't even think it's a puppet. Enough of the person off screen just to kind of just see that girl there. Just hit her. And even better. If you can get her in the tit, even better. <laughs> you, know what you, were saying, you know what I was thinking when you said that? He just gets drunk, decides upon a motion capture suit, and just goes in front of the camera. Ooh, I'm a navvy! <laughs> just yeah. going mad and all that. My mind went somewhere else. I thought oh, that God. he gets so drunk, he sticks um, a Hoover hose up his arse. <laughs> and then goes, Ooh, I'm a navvy! <laughs> so it's close to you. Ah, yeah. Great yeah. minds think alike. Great minds definitely think alike, guys. But, uh, but yeah, I know we've mentioned earlier in the pod the Italian ripoffs of the big blockbusters. There's a charm to them. I mean, some of them, a large majority of them, aren't great. Some of them are. But I find this really charmless when I was watching even the gratuitous boobies. And then there's the two bitch girls. Mm-hmm. And pretty nice guys just working in the hotel. It's like, you want some nice food from the hotel? I get to come out with you on the boat? Okay. 
and they just want to get him to give him the food. And worst shot I think I've ever seen in cinema history, <laughs> where he's like, "You just got to jump on the boat." Doesn't even try. No. Nah. He doesn't even try to get on the boat. He just is like, if the boat was there, like to your left, I'm just going to jump to my right and hope for the best. He aimed for the bushes. Yeah, he did aim for the it's bushes. Bit, it's a bit like Ron Hard in The Simpsons where he tries to jump from the car to the yeah. jeep. Just... <laughs> <laughs> do, you know I, do you know what I'm pitching? I think you've just quoted it. I think it's just the other guys. Yeah. Samuel oh, L. Perfect, Jackson, yeah. The Rock. It's like, aim for the bushes. We'll get there. Like, no. I, I, th- th- you've both watched this. Joe, for the first time, what really did you think of Piranha 2? I thought at the beginning, I was like, right, this is going to be dumb, exploitative, Italian fun. And it is to an extent, there's the weird bit at the beginning where the mother and the son have some weird sexual tension between themselves. And you're like, what the hell's going on here? And then... That's where it got good. <laughs> for you. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then you, you're introduced to all the like sort of eccentric characters, just like the old cougar. She's on the hunt for the oh, young fella. Her. Ah, she was great. Um, and then, like you said, Lance Henriksen and all the, like the fellow who's pretending to be a, a doctor, but he's a dentist, really. Like, there's <laughs> but all they of have that a there. lovely relationship. Exactly. No, I like. He meets the woman of his dreams. You're a doctor? I know. No, I'm a dentist. Um, a dentist? <laughs> that'll do. Um, but no, it gets to a point. You're like, okay, you've introduced all these characters and then it hits a brick wall. You're like, oh no. Like it. It starts going into, like you said, the Jaws rip-off territory. It's like, let's just remake Jaws from this Because it's on. quite slow. Yeah. And it's only, what, an hour and 20 minutes. And there's a lot of setup, And a lot of, like, oh, are the piranhas? Are they not? And then it kind of gets going a little bit. I think the finale for what it is, is ambitious, clearly, for the film that it's the budget. It's working. Whether or not it works is another thing. It's like, just go down and from down there with all that dynamite be fine six minutes you'd be grand you've got them good old Hollywood lungs but I quite like so you have Trisha O'Neill who is is our lead popped up I think she pops up another one other character isn't Titanic, Titanic? She's she's in, in, yeah. the lady what a role and we have her and then we have this guy is it Steve Marachuk who's Tyler the kind of love interest yeah. the guy who may or may not be working with the Navy to cover up yet another fuck up <laughs> and I, I quite like how he's hanging about with her at the start and it's like he just wants to get his hole yeah no he just wants to hang out with her yeah. remember he just says and then oh, he's like, no no I'm happy just to hang out with you and she's like no I just want to go home and then she's like you know I've got an even better idea let's go to the morgue and then weirdly going to the morgue and seeing a dead body seems to get quite horny mm. because they go back and she's like oh do you want to stay the night we may or may not have sex. No woman has ever said that to me. But a woman has said to me, we may have sex. I have had sex in my life. <laughs> but I've never had that situation where it's been like, well, I've never went to a morgue with a girl who went here. <laughs> Let's go back. <laughs> but it's been, I don't know. It's its just a weird film where plot just moves on. And then it just gets to, the guy's not the mayor. He's the owner of the hotel, isn't mm-hmm. he? Who's like, no, the beaches yeah. need to be open because we've got to do this weird chant where we call to the fish and is it horns that they have? We have to yeah. get the horn anyway. They have to call to the, the fish and it's just a sense of like, right, okay, we know what's going to happen. Yeah. But practically, is that not how you not fish? You're not supposed to disturb the water and they're like fucking smashing away. <laughs> and you're like, what fish are you going to get that way? Like oh, we crab or something? Piranhas. Well, maybe crabs from something else. But Big flying oh. piranhas. <laughs> But weirdly, so, I mean, so you were not fussed. No. Like, you've watched this for yeah. the first time. It, What's your thoughts on it? It's not great, but it's honestly not as bad as anything. Like, there's some shit fish-based horror movies that I've watched <laughs> this year that are far worse than this. For this being a Frankenstein of a movie, just what's your together. favorite? What's your least favorite kind of fish-based horror movies you've watched this year? Uh, what was the one I watched? The one that was on Netflix that everybody's fucking. Man, Dad, we're like, I was really good. Under Paris, is it? Oh, it's Paris. terrible. Fuck, it's dog shit. And that is another Jaws ripoff. Yeah. That even has a mayor that's like, That is oh. a mayor's like, no, the Olympics must happen. We must do the triathlon. Although, so they can't do that. Now, do you not see what they're doing in France to protest their swimmers? No. People are literally shitting in the river to stop their Olympic swimmers from practicing. Yeah, Love, for, the French, for yeah. Love the French. Love the French. Do you find it weird when you're watching Under Paris? The, the fact, because I didn't realise... 
it was a French production. Mm-hmm. Although it's got the actress from the artist who I love, who kind of has popped up kind of post the artist in a lot of weird and different roles, but um, th- that it's dubbed. Mm-hmm. And I didn't realize because I was like, as I was trying to say, look, can we just watch the subtitle one? Because the dubbed is terrible. And it's like, why is this French police officer? I'm taught. Is it, why, I don't know why he's good at that voice, but he's everyone's American. Yeah, it's weird. And I don't know. I was because I was looking at, it, was watching it with my wife. I was like, with under under Paris. Do you think they use that new AI dub technology where they're trying to move people's mouths? I don't actually know. I don't. Sometimes it felt like it was, and other times it's like no, because someone will be like, "I really like that," and the lips are still moving. It just made me wish I was watching Amsterdam. Ah, <laughs> which is a great boat chase. Great mm. boat, fantastic boat chase. But that's what it reminded me of because of the canals and stuff. Um, I've also seen There's Something in the Water, which came out in the cinema in June. Um, that is a shark movie that just plays it by the numbers. Isn't terrible. Yeah, I heard Mark Carmo talking about it last month. He was not glorious in his review, but he just said, look, it, it, there's a lot of things it tries to do. It's still a blatant Jaws ripoff, you know, the granddaddy of them all in, in Jaws. It's hard to beat in the fact that it's just like the Great White itself. It's just lean and efficient and knows exactly what it wants. Um, but apparently, I haven't seen it yet, mm-hmm. but it, it tries to do some interesting things. Maybe not in the sense that I guess it's trying to get you interested in the people before they become shark bait. Hoo ha ha. <laughs> yeah, there, that's not, it's not terrible. Like I said, it's I've seen so many of these fucking um, Netflix original movies that are just like, oh, I got stuck, I got stuck out here in the in the ocean, I'm gonna get eaten by a shark. Boo. Um, it's not too bad. And then obviously the the worst one I've seen recently is Finding Dory, <laughs> <laughs> which has a great Sigourney Weaver joke. Yeah. Well, as we know, I mean, people only need to the the previous Ramble cast. Yeah. And to hear your thoughts about Finding Dory and uh, also look back and check out our Cars 2 pod, the greatest Pixar sequels of all time. Yep, that's right. Yeah, that's our that's good pod. We, we tried our best it. to not talk about Cars 2. Yep. <laughs> I appreciated that because I was like, oh, I really want to listen to this week's pod, but Cars 2. And then it's like, no, no, you do a good job. No, we solved it. Yeah, yeah. we had a lot of fun. We, we solved it by talking about every other Pixar movie apart from Cars. And I think we're v- threatening to do the same in this Cameron retrospective <laughs> as we talk about uh, Piranha 2, but trying to talk about every other movie apart from Piranha 2. Yeah. Do you have any other, like, I, I guess on that note, I mean, this is a blatant Jaws ripoff. And it's it's weird because Piranha was marketed and sold very much on the back of the success of Jaws. And yes, of course, that sense of fish eating people in the water. Okay, well, Jaws kind of set the precedent on that. There was movies dealing with monsters in the sea long before Jaws, but Jaws just kind of bottled it all up, put it together and packaged it as a great summer blockbuster. Piranha takes that. You've got a talented director in Joe Dante. You've got a producer in Roger Corman who knows all the rules, but this is, has to be X length. It has to have uh, scantily clad ladies. has to have action sequence. Blah, 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 blah. Is there, I'm nearly certain, is there an exploding helicopter in Piranha? I can't remember off the top of my head. Piranha. But, uh, think, you know, Roger Corman, he had his rules. He understood the bare essentials of cinema. He knew how cinema worked and he knew what audiences wanted. But here... Bizarrely, we do have a film that does have a helicopter. And there is a sequence that just... That's why I'm wondering, off the top of my head, I'm nearly certain it's out after Jaws 2. Because there's a whole sequence. There's sequences in Piranha 2 that are lifted from not just Jaws, but Jaws 2. There's a whole sequence in the heli- on in the helicopter with a boat rescue. It's like, well, I'm trying to remember, is it Jaws 2 or is it Jaws of Revenge when Michael Caine shows up? I know it, I know Michael Caine does pop up in... It's the fourth one, yeah. so that's Revenge, isn't it? Yeah, mm-hmm. but I'm nearly certain there's a, there's a helicopter sequence in Jaws 2. Because they go to the uh, island at the oh, end yeah, of Jaws no, it's, 2 and it's, then he's like, come here, shark! Stupid fish. <laughs> they're, they're like stuck on a raft or something and it's lowering itself to like rescue him, but it grabs yeah. on to like, it's like a, you know, the wee end thing the bar people hang on for some reasons it's like yeah. a giant sponge because sharks something. are bastards yeah mm. what's worse than a shark piranha oh or two sharks <laughs> three sharks <laughs> or sharks with piranha taped around them yeah oh, man. freaking lasers on their head do you know what actually weirdly piranha <laughs> 2 reminded me of when i was watching it kind of like the bizarre jurassic world sequels in the sense it was like all this kind of like we've got piranhas 
How could we make them better? Let's fuck about and let's make a new species. Or just make it all about locusts. Yeah. Because we all loved that one, didn't we? Yeah. But they brought the old cast back. And they were shouting it. Yeah. <laughs> hey, we're going to get new. We're going to get more Jurassic World movies. Boo. Against our will. Yeah. But I don't know. I just find it. Did you kind of find some charm in it? A little bit. The, is, the, is that the boobs? The, well, yes, of course. The The one thing that at the start had me like, okay, I'm in, was when Lance Hendrickson's name came on screen and I had a box around it. Mm. I was like, hold on a minute. I was wondering, is that in his contract? He's like, I know everyone else's name comes up, but mine has to be in the box. I guess he's the biggest star mm. at that point. He was in, what, Dog Day Afternoon? Was the Terminator or? No, no, Terminator was after. No, yeah. no, you're right. Yeah, Dog Day Afternoon. That was it. Because uh, you probably got couple of him, stage stuff. Trisha, yeah. Trisha mm. O'Neill mm. as well. And it might be a way, like when we talked about Shallow Grave, might be the, the presence of him probably helped make sure the film happened. <laughs> yeah. Um. Also, like I said, I think maybe a May's Rumble cast, um, watching Pumpkinhead. Lance Hendrickson always looks weird to me when he's not on a spaceship. I can't handle it. Because he is otherworldly. Yeah. <laughs> he does he just, have that look. He just has that face that you're like, you belong in the future in space. Is that like that time when you met him uh, and you just wanted to rub his face? <laughs> I was like, you you're all just mi- not real. You all milky. <laughs> You're just not real to me, Lance. If you're on a spaceship, I could put my hands right through you. I cried when you died in a VP. <laughs> I've heard, uh, I was at a Comic Con uh, in Birmingham and uh, bumped into Oliver Harper. I don't know if you know Oliver Harper from YouTube. Okay. Um, uh, he does retrospective stuff and he was talking to Lance Henderson in like the green room area mm-hmm. and he was telling me that Lance is a lovely man. Oh, that's nice. I've so, only heard good things about him. Yeah. Um, and Lance, if you're listening, more on. Yeah, he's always happy to do alien stuff, which I always appreciate. Adam will yeah. happily build a little spaceship, so he'll be content when we do the interview. Just oh. so you can do a little green screen, or maybe a green screen where it's like I, I can concentrate now. You just need to put them in a booth and just wheel them in. I'm just making you feel safe. Yeah, <laughs> he'll he'll keep getting them to do the hand thing with a knife. Uh, uh, he know. just stabs every finger. Sorry, I haven't done this in years. <laughs> I'll be milking. Yeah. <laughs> So, so, Piranha 2. Yeah. I find it really boring. And I'm really yeah. struggling. I I thought I would find some kind of perverse glee in the fact, here's a film, James Cameron, first time out. Uh, there's a bit of boobs, a lot of boobs. And it's just sequences for no apparent reason. I don't have that many female friends. But I don't know if I imagine those female friends just for no part reason. It's like, here, let's just sit around and uh, just chat with their tops off. You're hanging around the wrong female friends. Mm, I am. One time I went to co-op around the corner from me, and when I was walking back again, I looked into somebody's um, arsehole. <laughs> <laughs> That's my job. <laughs> I looked into somebody's like uh, driveway, and there was just a woman just sitting with her top off. It was sunny at the time. It wasn't yeah. in the dead Pish of the rain. <laughs> <laughs> at like three out. o'clock in the morning. <laughs> I'm auditioning to be in Piranha 3. <laughs> and, and what do you think? How old were you? This was like last year. So 30. And she was about 60. And you know what, Jim? I haven't forgot it. <laughs> the end. Was it like the opposite of like American Beauty? <laughs> I plastic bag was flying yeah. about the place. <laughs> no, I'm just... We, Rose we, came out of me. <laughs> No, I'm just picturing in my head. Were were you when you saw it? Were you a bit like um, he who should not be named? That actor. Some people want him out of movie jail, mm-hmm. and just having a wee good stare and just fascinated by it. I, it was it was more like the graduate. Right, it was like you trying to seduce me, <laughs> Mrs. Realvison. <laughs> She's like, get the fuck off my out of my garden. <laughs> You weird wee lad. <laughs> Me coming back with my wee two litre of suki. <laughs> wee sausage roll. Yeah. <laughs> Did you offer a bite of your sausage roll? You're like, here. She's like, is it pork or beef? <laughs> I think it's a man. You find out. It's definitely onion. Oh, <laughs> Jesus. Piranha 2. Or, just on that note, I can imagine you just standing there looking at her, just munching on a pack of kippy nuts. Oh, fuck, I was sweating to you. <laughs> she had to get her husband out. She goes, I won't like, fuck off the driveway. Just eating a wee pack of nuts. <laughs> just sitting there. 
<laughs> just every time she's she we, looks at UK sounds like don't mind me Should we not remind me of something <laughs> she's just sitting there trying to read take a break in peace four down <laughs> mom you're not even trying <laughs> Joe have you ever had that experience have you ever just been walking back from the shop and just seen a woman just, no no, no strangely enough no or mom Cockroach. well no <laughs> can I tell you a cockroach story two cockroach stories right go for it um I used to work in an off license and a guy once came in and he was an alcoholic, which is weird being an off license. Mm. And um, his uh, trousers fell down and his cock <laughs> fell out. <laughs> Second story, a guy was buying something. Can I, can I ask? <laughs> <laughs> just, just, whoop. You can ask me after. Well, sorry. Was, was, there, <laughs> was there a funny noise played when his trousers fell down? <laughs> <laughs> that was him going back up. And then the second story was uh, a guy. I was like, "Oh, it's like four fifty. And the guy was like, "Yeah, here you go." And had a, like the change in his hand, it was just beside his cock, and his cock was out. So I had to look at it. Did you have a look? Fuck it. Right. <laughs> you sat there munching with your KP nuts. I went. Actually, went three fifty. Yeah, mate, you have that for free. <laughs> I'll take a pound. <laughs> <laughs> Never happened to me. Um, I do remember when I was younger. Um, I probably mentioned this pod many, many years ago when we had our caravan. My mum and dad had the caravan in Clocky. There was one of the neighbours um, in her awning, like to uh, sunbathe topless. topless. And being the insidious, horrible person that I was as 10 or maybe 12 year old, befriended her, <laughs> befriended her son so we could go sit in the caravan. And uh, when she was in the awning, have a wee look. <laughs> I'm going to be your mate so I can look at your man. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> in fairness, I will say this. She was a former Miss Northern Ireland who may still well be married to Darren Clark. What year? <laughs> yeah, well, you've been... No, I mean, what year was she Miss Northern Ireland? I don't know. No, I just don't know. Yeah. I don't know. No, I don't have the top of my head. I'll... Her name is Pamela Ballantyne. Yeah. Oh, Pamela. <laughs> Go on, you girl, yeah. And I tell you, I was 12 year old, and even I was standing well, there with my KP nuts. Jim, it's been 30 years. No, <laughs> still remember. I remember actually Pamela Ballantyne was on our school trip. It was for genuinely true story. Tomorrow. And she was doing fun. It's awful, actually, when you think about it. She was oh, just no. like doing all these funny poses in the airport. We were going to Ice Switch. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were going to sit a. Thunderland. <laughs> no, it was literally ice pitch because I think it was like part of a big program. There's all these schools in Northern Ireland that were going at the time, but she was in the airport doing all these funny poses. And like, does she know where we're going? <laughs> what was kind of some of the poses she was doing? Just like in the airport, it's like, you know, like TV presenters do yeah. the big, like, hey, way, and all that, there kind of stuff, waving their hands in the air. Did she and do this that? And like six in Did the morning. Did she do that? And then one of the teachers just went over to her and went, hey, Pamela, um, no, that was last year that went to Thunderland. <laughs> <laughs> This year they're actually going to ice switch, and she's like, "Oh!" And then she just did a wee mm, sad face. <laughs> All I can think of is that I love Lucy. Yeah. Bringing it back. Um, yeah, it was just really awkward because even then I was like sixteen and the height of stupid humor. I was like, "That's not on." Yeah. <laughs> All I can think of is sort of interest inside the walls. Pamela Ballantyne. It's Pamela Ballantyne. Hiya! Coming up tonight on UTV. All that Highland score. Yeah. That's just Julian Simmons. <laughs> he was the air host. Face on her like a cooker hood, nose on her like a cooker hood. Or whatever it is. I don't know what other phrases he says. But yes, Piranha 2 this morning. Yes. I find it really boring. And I think this is also evident in the pod where we're struggling. We're, we're talking about the big beats within the film. Um, yeah, when will the, the Navy learn? Don't fuck about with fish. Don't it, Don't send a fish to do a job a dolphin could do. It's one of my favourite things where she's like, you knew about like the, like yeah. the fish. And he was like, um, well, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I got Oops. my whole low. <laughs> <laughs> Worth it. Um, I wrote in my letterbox, this is the thickest her you'll see in a Hollywood feature film. See the the her that everybody has in their head. Jesus, in that heat, anyone who were fucking sweating. <laughs> Absolutely. It was a lot of perms. It was a lot of perms. A lot of perms. I'd say a lot of product. Mm-hmm. Hold them in place. And then, weirdly, with Piranha 2, it goes just kind of apeshit in the finale. I mean, it's quite tame. It's like literally like, oh, 
here's a character we have not really seen throughout the film just popping up for like oh they're looking they're on a boat they're just walking about the place or some of them there's the the black guy who's just kind of is he is he a fisherman he's oh the dynamite fisherman yeah yeah yeah, yeah. and he's just kind of like oh what is that bizarre noise I hear? And then just got to Piranha flying across the screen. Right, and it literally as if someone had just threw something at him. No, it's because he wants to get revenge on him because they kill his son. Oh, no, no. That's what I mean. His son. Oh, it's his son when his, he's his like... His, son, the- his son's death. Yeah. And it's just like, it's just... It's, it's stupid. It's just stupid. And as I come back to I love the fact it's like, particularly on the beach sequence near the end, it's mm. clearly like just like these Piranha figures i'm not going to call them puppets or animatronics it's like the pun on a washing line just yeah it's like, <laughs> but it's quite icky and nasty in that when mm. you see the kind of aftermath of that um beat sequence when they all try to fight the piranha and mm. lose well that's Nature, it, yeah, one man zero yeah the way it's obscured in darkness but you see just the wounds and a little bit of yeah. blood flying i was like yeah that's done quite well but and the wee piranha's just flopping about well that's it yeah but yeah like, even going back to the uh, going out to get revenge, you're like, oh, he's gonna have a big moment, <laughs> take on all these prom- No, Vinced first, no, one. <laughs> like literally two fly in his neck, and he just drops to the ground. You're like, I think he oh. punches one, doesn't he? He's like, he's like trying. I to, think he misses it. He's like <laughs> uh, trying it. to punch it, and then he just dies. Yeah, pretty much. And you're just like, oh, and everyone just uh, looks at him through the window with the bloodstained window, and they're like, oh, oh no, the dynamite fisherman's gone. It's like the mist. <laughs> it's not <laughs> but, really, <laughs> but not as depressing. But I guess in the sense that, like, in the mist when they're all in the the shopping centre or all in the big shop and they're all watching people die. And like, mm. I like when they send the yeah. soldier out. To, yeah. Aye. You deal with it. Next. <laughs> but, yeah, I I, I was I, I have to admit, I was bored watching it. Oh, no, same here. I was bored watching it. Um, You were clearly bored. You were enjoying the boobs and reminiscing about that time you saw a 60-year-old's boobs. I'm not lying to you. It did happen to me. Just, what, Piranha 2? No, I was just <laughs> thinking of the boobs and then being like, yeah, I don't know. I like the, it wasn't what, like you I got was, an erection? No, like I wasn't like I was in the mood for boobs. But sometimes you just Are we see, semi? Sometimes you just want to see boobs and you go, you know what? No, pretty sweet. Yeah. You get your boobs, Phil. Yeah. In this movie, without a doubt. Yeah. My but, quota of boobs was up there. How much boobs quota do you want from a movie? Mm. At least two, I guess. It depends on the movie. See, if you're making a movie about, like, a killer spa, like Death Spa, Mm -hmm. I want to see boobs aplenty. Mm -hmm. If you're giving me a movie based in space with Lance Henderson, maybe some boobs through a nice white tank top. Sigourney, what's happening? Uh, But with this movie... Human boobs or space boobs? Oh, uh, I'll take take a a Total Recall space boob. Oh, can't beat a Total Recall. That's a three for two deal. Yeah. (laughs) <laughs> just like the KP nuts exactly um, but yeah it's, uh, Jim I'll be honest with you it's a hard movie to talk about for me like it's going tits or class <laughs> it really is it's just like I, it's decent start Get really, gets really boring it's big weird. finale it's weird Dumb. that he goes from this to the Terminator aye because what was it he was originally just supposed to be like um, what do you call it? head of special effects for yeah. us and then your fella, what was his name, uh, Drake got fired, mm. and then finished shooting it. And then they're like, eh, "You're not allowed to see any of the footage, so yeah. fuck off, Jim." And you're like, oh, "Okay." Because I don't um, think he was allowed. He wasn't allowed, as you say, he wasn't allowed to edit it. No, no, no. So he's only ever seen like the cut version of it. Although there is there is two versions of it. There is a director's cut. Although I don't know if it's an official I don't, director's I don't cut. I think it's Cameron's, but he it's not him. Which director? <laughs> and I was like, which one is like Drake was brought back? He's like, I didn't shoot any of this, but I'm going to give you a cut. <laughs> That's nice, isn't it? I- <laughs> It's nice to be involved. Because Cameron, I mean, I know we've talked about it throughout this retrospective. It's that sense that he, there's there's loads kind of, like, uh, Escape from New York, he's working, he, he was yeah. a visual effects person. Was it's Escape like, from New York his first? It was, first? yeah, he did the, you know, the scene where the helicopter was flying. Yeah, but was that he one did of his the first projects he worked on? Probably, yeah, he, he was Early started on. with Corman and then I think he went to New Moon as well. Mm-hmm. And yeah, Escape from New York was another film he'd done and then this was his, supposed to be his big break. Yeah. As such, but well, because that was the thing that Corman did really well. Is like he saw talented people who were ambitious, yeah. hungry, wanted to make movies, and said, "Right, here's a film. There's your budget. Oh, by the way, is that film that's like two million? I actually want to make it. You have to make it for a million. Well, that's me. It's like it Joe work. Dante. It's like you've got film trailers for me for a bit, but then I'll let you make a film. Yeah, Ron Hard. You have to act in a few films, but then I'll let you make a film. Stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. 
Brilliant. I mean, Cormoran was brilliant. And I, I mean, it, it's, I hold my hands up and say, I, I genuinely thought he was involved because the fact it's a sequel, low budget, but it's not. It is pretty much just an Italian ripoff. Mm. Classic what they do. Take a sequel to a franchise and, well, franchise, one film, mm. <laughs> and then do their own thing. And there's no, other than boobs, there's no charm to it. There's no fun to it. And I may be. Because, Joe, I'm going to tangent, tangent, tangent. Yeah. I remember watching Texas Chainsaw for the first time. Sorry, Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2, because I know we were involved in screening last month at the Strand, which was great crack. And I said at the night, I think when I first watched Texas Chainsaw 2 at home, didn't like it. Watched it with an audience, and it's like, yeah, it was a lot of fun. I'm worried maybe the fact that I watched it, I was tired, I was grumpy, and I was like, oh, yeah, fuck, I've watched three movies back-to-back. I've got to watch Piranha 2 for the pod. Yes, listeners, this is me researched and prepared. And I was just like, this is no fun. Do you think maybe this would be different watching with an audience? A few dra- oh, every film is, of course, different with an audience and a few beers in, but I still, I would, I mean, having watched and put on a screening of Piranha, and had fun with that. I'm I'm really glad we didn't do a double bill. But uh, that's maybe Adam, Joe. What's your thoughts? Do you think with an audience in a cinema, you know, when that kind of setting, oh, it's one of those so bad it's good movie settings. I'm I'm I think I'd have even, I'd even struggle to to sell it in that front. I think the the start and the end, yes, would be fun. But the middle slump. Well, just whether in the on the boat making love <laughs> or under the sea. We Sebastian the Scotland, Scotland past. <laughs> Don't worry, it's wetter. Um, yeah, the middle slump is just the fucking, you know, I think exposition you, set up. Yeah. You, you would just lose the audience. It would kind of be one of those ones where, like, you could start it and be like, right, we'll do a quiz when this is on. <laughs> and then uh, everybody shush, the hands coming up. There's boobs on. Shh. <laughs> that would be maybe the only way. And like you say, maybe a double bill would be the only way to see if this, but with this being the. A triple bill, of, but with this being in the middle. But even then, it's kind of like you're putting it in the middle because it's shade. <laughs> there's no real way to work it. Um, maybe it is great with an audience. Maybe there's like throw something the fucking new Beverly would you, because Tarantino would be like, I like flying fish, but um, I don't know why he speaks like a small Italian man. Um, <laughs> <Bobby the Bob. laughs> Is that Jared Leto? <laughs> <laughs> the crow? Yeah. Oh no. Um, but yeah, I don't really know, Joe. Nah, it's shite. Uh, no, I'm just gonna be honestly. Like, I know we're more or less trying to like will the idea of how mm-hmm. this would work in as, as a an, an audience pleasing film. I don't think it would. Or like, even, also, not even just that, but for someone who's foolishly listened to all these retrospectives, never watched Piranha yeah. Two. I don't think any of us are selling us going. Yeah, I would. I would watch if you're a completionist, maybe. But I think he could skip this. Yeah, that's I think a, he could easily start with the Terminator. Yeah, that's why we're doing this because the completionist nature this year. I yeah. thought we were going to skip it all together, yeah. but you're like, no, no, we'll do, it, we'll do it. And it's like, okay, okay, I've never watched it. I'll give it a go. But in watching, it, I'm like, there's not much there. Because even know. when I was watching, like we were going back to the beginning, I wanted to see what bit of Cameron was in it. And mm-hmm. you know, Adam's points a fair point in terms of the relationship dynamic between the the three leads. But at the same time. There's not much there you can really go. Eh. Mm. Well, yeah. since we're talking about Piranha, have either of you seen 3D and 3 Double D? Hell yeah. I seen 3D <laughs> in 3D, and then I went to see 3 Double D, and I was told they Jerry don't O'Connell. have eh? I was told they don't and his have member. It. He just wanted a wet t shirt contest. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, 3 Double D, went to see it, and it wasn't in 3D, and I was raging. Didn't get to see the Hoff in 3D. Ving Rames, isn't it? And then it's Kelly Brook, isn't it? Yeah, She's in the yeah. first, yeah. He loses his legs in the first one, and in the second, his legs are gone. Fingrams, something happened to him around <laughs> Mission Impossible 4, where he has just now, it's kind of as if his skull has fallen asleep, but the rest <laughs> of his body's still working. Do you know what I mean? No. <laughs> if I'm being honest, I've never When, re- when you did what? you get your doctorate, Adam? <laughs> I think it might be one Thank of those Thank you, like, Doctor. Now I have a word. Now I know what's wrong with me. I think if I go to watch each of the Mission Impossibles, like in a row, I'll be like, oh, fuck, his head's sinking. <laughs> he's like, down like this. He has his fedora on. And he's like, Ethan, you gotta get away, Ethan. Ethan, the bomb's in the toaster. Ethan. <laughs> Don't do it, Ethan. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, I know what you mean. <laughs> his skull has fallen asleep. 
Yes. Which is why he's chosen shade films in between Mission Impossible. Oh, that is true. Here, you got to pay the bills. Hey, I suppose. Well, you know, I know we're talking about a lot of boobs. Next week, we're going to be talking about strip tees, which features... Finger rims. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot he was in a- His skull's fully awake in that one. Yes. <laughs> but in that movie, he is, like, fully alert, giving it fucking great comedy chops. Yeah. Whereas in Mission Impossible Fallout, he's fucking in the back of the van. I think he's just tired of fucking Tom just going, stop the fuck trying to get me into Scientology. Not happening, Ethan. Not happening, Ethan. It's a really good impression. Yeah. Look out in a few weeks if Adam mysteriously gets a phone call from Fing Rames <laughs> in a new comedy bit in the podcast. When you're not speaking to your uncle Liam, you're speaking to your great cousin Ving. <laughs> My cousin Ving. Twice removed. Yeah. <laughs> there we go. There's a, there's a future segment. Yeah, I think in all honesty, listeners, this is us like trying to pull teeth here. Mm, We've probably. watched this film. Yeah, pulling piranha teeth. I don't think we've enjoyed this. Um, given the fact that we've talked more about Ving Rhames, other, sh- other kind of... Public nudity. Public nudity. Uh, we've talked about public nudity, we've talked about Ving Rhames, and we've also talked about other sea-related horror movies. I don't think we're... I think we've already said this. I don't think we're selling this movie. I think that's that would be fine with Jim. Not you, but Cameron. Yeah. <laughs> if if he was like, actually, like, listening to the guys talk about my movie, we both have an ego boost, even he would be like, I oh, for a days, boys. You no, know, George, he's watching and he goes, you're fucking right, Adam. Ving Rhames' skull is asleep. <laughs> or he's just watching the striptease scene in True Lies on a loop. Yeah. Oh. Or he's now Googling, looking back and finding out an interview from Ving Rhames and character from Prana 3D. <laughs> Prana 3D, I remember seeing this in, I think it was press screen for us. Um, back in the Dublin Road days, and it's it's fun. It's it's one of those ones where you watch it and you go, "This is not that nasty." A bit like Piranha Two, you know, it's quite tame. And then it gets to the big finale in the boat sequence, and it's like they just go, "Fuck it, throw everything at it." Piranha Three Double Day, shit. It yep. has one good bit in it that I find it hilarious. Dave Kackner gets his head cut off, and it flies through the air in three D. Mm, okay, good. but Joe, Piranha Three D. Has of course your mortal enemy Hollywood hair. Oh fuck, he's the DJ in there, isn't he? He gets emptied, so you, yeah, yeah, it was a good it's positive. positive. Yeah, that's true. Hollywood so the, hair, of course, being Eli Roth for the yeah. listeners. <laughs> Everyone's uh, favorite movie of all things, hostel related, mm. uh, and yeah. knocking on people's doors. Isn't it knock knock? Knock knock. No, yeah. It's just knock knock. <gasps> yeah, here, see after the camera. What we'll do an Eli Roth retrospective? <laughs> <laughs> Where you see Anna Darmus is knock knock. So, <laughs> mummy. Yep. Just uh, put me in for <laughs> Three Green, fellas. Three green fellas Inferno, where I interviewed him for that title. Did you? Mm-hmm. Jim, you yeah. never told me that. I never told you that, no. no it, was very, it was very, very brief uh, interview. One of the first times going over the Edinburgh International Film Festival, which really is about 10 years. I was kind of looking that up on, came up as a Facebook memory, because I'm nearly certain I interviewed him the same year as I interviewed um, little Frodo, whose name's been down in my head. Elijah Wood? Elijah Wood, for a film I can't remember what it was. Did you ask Eli Roth why he made his then wife shit in a bucket in the film? <laughs> and then realised why he got divorced years later? I actually asked him and he said that was the moment when she was doing that scene and she asked to do it in method. He said, That's the moment that's the moment I'm gonna marry. See, to be fair, when I seen her in Green and Fur, I was like, I would have married her as well. Yeah. Even when she was doing a big muck in the muck. Hey. Love is love, Adam. <laughs> love is love. So I think we're gonna wrap this pot up on that lovely shit related note. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, uh, next pod, Joe, what are we going to be talking about on our common retrospective? I know we're kind of now at the stage where we're kind of getting to the deeper cuts, but Joe, what are we going to be talking about in the next pod? It's we underwater docks uh, in terms of Ghosts of the Abyss and Aliens of the Deep. Okay, so you have that to look forward to. Don't know, Adam, if you'll be joining us. I don't think there's enough boobs in that to, to lure you in. I'm afraid of water, so any water documentary, no thank you. Are you really fear of water? Yeah. How have we gone through fucking nearly an hour of this pod where we're talking about, you know, there's deep sea, there's fucking <laughs> underwater, <laughs> there's actual fucking. And how have we got to that stage where you're now, as we wrap up this pod, I'm starting to think this is just kind of purpose, purposely done by you. You think I like to extend pods? Yeah. <laughs> no way. No. Um, yeah. We'll talk about Good Burger. I have a mortal fear of water, but sure, we'll talk about that whenever we talk about... Um, is there a reason? I, I, I'm going to feel bad 
Uh, when you explained to me the reason, just died, almost died a few times in water, but you're fuck fucking boring. Hell. Like, no. although I do like to, you know, do the uh, Spider Man thing on the side of a. Yeah, this, this probably, I do enjoy doing that, and I still will do that. At the age we of jets on your arse, it's great. Joe, now, if you want to extend this podcast for another 45 minutes, let's talk about putting water jets up our holes. <laughs> well, oh, it's not your holes, you put it around your dinkle tongue. And oh, I think I think bump. girls do it the same as well. They get both, the best of both words. Yeah. It, it's it's to massage. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but anyway, yeah, that's uh, water jets. But it's a rite of passage for boy back, or girl. Back, back for 40 year olds. <laughs> for boy or girl, no matter what, just in the swimming pool, you're going across the sides, you come across the jets, and you're like, oh. Mm. Oh, chimpanzee that. Oh. See the episode <laughs> of It's Always Sully where oh, Mac yeah. puts his yeah. in, on the jets. One of the best final shots of a TV show ever. Fantastic stuff. The smile of a happy man. Mm. Mm. I don't think I ever did the butt. I think I only ever liked it around the dinkle dunk. The will? Yeah, the will. Mm. And you do the wee Wild synchronized Wild swimmer thing. You just, like, a wee ballerina. You go around in circles. It's great. Mm. Oh, that is good as well. Mm-hmm. Well, we all, oh, we should do the finale of this in the jacuzzi, the three of us. <laughs> Make but our own bubbles. It's just a normal bath, but we're all just farting. <laughs> what do you mean? Adam, Adam eventually goes, oh no. <laughs> what, is, what do you mean? Again. It's happening again. It's happening again. Listen back to previous rambles. So, on that note, that brings this pod to a close. So, if you've enjoyed this very rambly edition of the pod, where it's quite clear, listeners, we didn't like this movie. No. We didn't enjoy this movie. We struggled to talk about this movie. So. If you really want to be a completionist, go out, seek it out. Piranha 2, The Spawning. If not, uh, tune in next week uh, for more pods. And if you've enjoyed us talking about boobs, coming across as, you know, men of a certain age enjoying the female female anatomy, then tune in next week when we're talking about striptease. But we've got a girl on that pod, so it's okay. She'll probably be talking more boobs than us. Yeah, hope so. Otherwise, we'll just come across as creepy. But you've got to look forward to. So, yeah, all that's left for me to do. Thank my two guests. So, thank you very much, Joe. Thank you, Jim. Thanks very much, Adam. And yeah. And we'll be back next week with another podcast. But for now, until then, goodbye. Goodbye.